So what we just saw in the previous segment is a particular patient who we called Mary, who had a number of tumors, one of them definitely in her lungs, another one definitely in her brain. And that defined the situation that she was dealing with as stage four squamous cell lung cancer. Stage four is the worst case scenario for this particular patient. And as we saw in the previous segment, it is a very, very dire prognosis. We need to deal with this disease. We need to find a way to treat it. We need to find a way to treat individual patients with it so that we get good outcomes for the patients and that their quality of life is not damaged or destroyed. The only way that we can do this is for science to determine two things. First of all, in the case of Mary and every other patient that we deal with, what happened? What is this disease? What's going on with this disease and what are its properties? Now, over the last 3,000 years, we've made great progress, especially in the last 50, on understanding the answer to that question. This disease has been known for a very long time. It's called cancer originally, from what I understand, by Aristotle, the Greek philosopher. And it's called a crab uh, because it adheres to any part that it seizes upon in an obstinate manner like a crab. And this is coming from uh, one of the classic pathophysiology textbooks that they use in, in medical schools. Um, and the original person who said this, I don't know, but it's, it's a uh, common term. Cancer, which literally means crab, is a term that we use for any malignant tumor. So a malignant tumor is any tumor that has two properties. First, it's invasive. It acts like a fungus. It grows into the tissue. It doesn't just grow and push the tissue out. It actually grows into the tissue. And secondly, it's capable of moving from one place of the body to another. Now, diseases that can do that have this property that we call metastasis. They have the ability to metastasize. And mumps will do that, for example. But cancer is, is characterized by that. A malignant tumor is characterized by these two properties, invasiveness and metastasis. I'll get into that here shortly, just a moment. But there's a second question that we have to deal with. And the second question is, why did this arise? Why did this happen in Mary's, in Mary's body? Why does it happen in our patients' bodies? What is it that causes it? That's called the etiology of the disease. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into both of those questions uh, right away. But we're going to start with just understanding the disease in a general sense. Now, before we continue with this, I want you to understand, just like everything else that I've done in this class, I will only scratch the surface. I'm not going to go deep into anything. I'll show you one particular thing in some detail, but not a lot. So just be aware that what I'm teaching you is just the bare minimum, not what we understand about cancer. We understand much, much more than I'm about to go through. But just to get a sense so that you can get a sense for the disease, I'm going to go through a few of these items so that you can, when you study it later, have at least the beginning of a scaffold on which to put more of the concepts in the theory that we understand of, of this disease. So let's start with what is happening in Mary's body. The first thing we have to explain is what's going on with those two properties of cancer that I talked about, the invasion and metastasis. So the very first proper property is invasion. Now, the type of tumor that she has is classified as a carcinoma. By definition, a carcinoma is any tumor that arises, or any cancer, malignant tumor, that arises from what's called an epithelium like this. An epithelium is any kind of tissue that lines either the inside of a duct or the outside of an organ or something along those lines. And it always is characterized by having bound cells to this thing called an extracellular matrix or ECM. So this extracellular matrix is like a membrane, but not a cell membrane. It's a, it's a, it's a very thin structure typically, although it can be much thicker, uh, over another tissue. And then this, uh, this ground tissue underneath here separates the epithelium, these purple cells, from this other tissue. The, the ECM separates those two tissue types. Now, in this particular case, what happened in Mary's body is that one cell, one renegade cell, which is, uh, I'm using uh, a phrase from one of the most famous cancer biologists in the world today, a guy by the name of Robert Weinberg. One cell changed, and it changed in some way and became more and more malignant. And that's what this pattern is meant to represent. What happened was this. We have a perfectly normal, healthy cell like this, and it changed somehow. 
it changed in some way and it began to grow a little bit and began to proliferate. The cell itself didn't grow, it just began to, to divide. And it gave rise to a little nubbin here. It's not such a big deal, sort of like a bump on your skin, like a mole or something like that. It wasn't necessarily dark, but it was just a little bump. But then something else happened to one of those cells and it became more proliferative and it grew into a slightly bigger bump. And then eventually, a couple of other changes occurred in these cells that already had accumulated two or three changes until eventually you get this characteristic, this phenotype. This phenotype is the dangerous one. This is the progression to full-blown cancer. These cell types will lead to little tiny tumors which we are calling benign because they don't have the two properties that define a malignancy. They don't have invasion potential and they don't have um, metastatic potential. They just grow. But one of their descendants changes in some way to have the ability to do two things. First, to invade. And to invade, what this cell has to be able to do is to get through this extracellular matrix and get into this tissue beneath it. Now, there's no tissue here. This is just open space up here. So in order for this to invade, it has to somehow eat away at that ECM and work its way down into this tissue. When it does that, then we have a full-blown cancer. And that is the characteristic of invasion. The cells begin to invade these tissues and they start to grow into the tissue instead of just staying on top of the ECM. They literally chew their way through the ECM. So that is the first of the two malignant properties. The second, or yeah, the second of these uh, properties is sort of similar. The cells can move like is shown here. This is a malignant melanoma. And here's the melanoma right here. This is, this is all the cancer tissue. This is reasonably healthy uh, skin. This is reasonably healthy skin. This is what it's supposed to look like, more or less, although there's some, some changes here. But you can see these dark staining cells. Those are all cancer cells, and they're growing down into this tissue, and they're causing all this reaction here, down here in this stuff. And this is your tumor. All the dark staining cells is the tumor that's growing down. And again, it's not this nice contained ball. If it were, then it would be benign. But because it can do this, it can also get involved with these blood vessels. And when it moves into the blood vessels and into the lymph vessels, which are vessels that carry sort of a serous fluid, then they can start to move. And here's an example of one. What you're looking at here is a blood vessel. This is a flat cell. Here's another flat cell. Those are squamous cells that are lining the interior of this microvessel, this small capillary. And here's a single cell, and this is a cancer cell. The one that's highlighted here is a cancer cell. And it is currently squeezing its way through this little duct right here, this little hole, pore, that's in this epithelial layer. Now the pore is supposed to be there. That's how the, the epithelium works. It allows the fluid, the serous fluid, to kind of float out, but it keeps contained the, the proteins in the cells. Now here are cells. These are red blood cells that are sort of smashed in this one side here in this picture. But this cancer cell is moving its way through and it's either going into the blood system or it's going out of the blood system. I can't tell which because the cell was killed to make this picture. But the point is, once the cell is into the blood, once it gets into the blood or into the lymph, it can go throughout the body and move its way throughout the body. What it can then do is once it gets to a particular location, it can extravasate. It can go out of the vessel and go into the tissues and spawn a new tumor in a different location. Now there's a typical pattern for different cancers. For example, lung cancer tends to go to the lymph nodes and then the liver and so forth. There are other patterns for other tumors, depending on how the blood is flowing out of the tissue out of which the tumor arose. But for lung cancer, for example, what we typically have is a tumor that'll start somewhere in the lung. In Mary's case, it started down here. And that tumor will begin, and when it grows, it, it continues uh, to grow and grow and grow. We call that the primary tumor. That's where the initial renegade cell began. That's where it started the tumor. But then what tends to happen is the tumors will start to pop up elsewhere within the lung and sometimes get involved in the lymph nodes and other tissues uh, around, like somewhere in the chest or the neck or in the, in the armpit. In that case, then we have what are called secondary or metastatic tumors. These are cells that, are, that have moved into the blood and then gone out, but nearby. They tend to get out and get nearby first. And the reason for that 
is because the immune system can sense them. The immune system can get them, grab them, and kill them. So the vast majority of these cells that get into the blood system, like this one, the vast majority of them get killed by the immune system. Okay, so the next sort of thing that happens, though, is this will just continue to shed cells. More and more cells come out of all of these tumors, the primary and the secondary tumors. And then they tend to get trapped in the lymph nodes. I'm showing one here in the armpit, but there can be some in the chest, up in the neck. And these lymph nodes will tend to swell as well because the tumor can grow within them. Uh, sometimes it can get into the, in the lymph node, and, and uh, even though they're getting filtered out by the immune system there in the lymph node, the immune system doesn't always kill them. Now, this will be on the same side, typically, to begin with. It'll be on the same side that the tumor began. So in this particular case, the tumor began in the left lung. We tend to see the left side lymph nodes be involved before the other side. We call those the ipsilateral or ipsilateral uh, uh, lymph nodes. Okay, so that's how it starts, but it continues. When it continues, then it'll tend to jump to the what we call the contralateral side, the other side. And then you'll start to see tumors in the same organ sometimes, or a repaired organ, like in the lungs. You'll see them start to invade the chest wall. That usually happens on this side first. Uh, and then you'll see it in the lymph nodes on the other side and so on. And that'll include lymph nodes in the neck, and in the, in the armpit, and the chest in the case of, of lung cancer. What, we're, what they're not showing here is uh, lung cancer often goes to the liver. But that tends to be where we start to see the first metastatic tumors. And now we're into what we would probably call a stage 3 tumor. Now, Mary's tumor, the one I introduced at the very beginning of the, of the lecture, was in stage 4 because it had gone to distant sites. It had gone beyond these original sites or even to the contralateral side and, is, and had gone up into the brain. And that's distant metastasis, which defines it as a stage 4 type of tumor. So these types of tumors then do this. These malignant tumors, they invade tissues like we see here in this melanoma, and they tend to spawn new tumors like we saw in the previous uh, lecture when I showed you the, the uh, head image of uh, Mary.